Two converging lenses, each of focal length 14.9 centimeters, are placed 39.4 centimeters apart, and an object is placed 30 centimeters in front of the first lens. Where is the final image formed? And what is the magnification of the system? So in this case, again, we have two converging lenses. I'm going to go ahead and draw some lenses. So I have my first lens, and then I have my second lens. And I'm going to kind of move this one a little bit further away. And we have an object that's right here in front of the first lens. It's 30 centimeters, so we'll call this, this distance is P1. This is the, the position of the first object. And it wants to know what Q, so if we call this uh, P1 and we call, so if we have lines that, so we, it comes in, so the light comes in from the top, from the bottom, the light converges and crosses, it converges and crosses, it hits into that second uh, lens, okay? Since they have the same focal length, whether or not the light coming out of this second lens is, go it's, so it's going to converge a little bit, we don't know if it's going to converge a little bit or if it's going to converge a lot. So depending on whether the image is formed behind this lens or in front of it is going to depend on how close this object is. So right now, let's just assume that it forms that behind, because the object is pretty far away, let's just assume that it forms somewhere behind the lens. We don't know how far behind, so it's going to still form somewhere behind the lens. And I know that's what's going to happen because I've worked the problem, but for your numbers it might not happen so um, but we're just going to use that for to to set up some definitions so this is where Q1 is so Q1 is right here and the distance between these two objects D is this now the rule with multiple lenses is that where the first image is formed that image becomes the object for the second lens and so we can call we can set up P2 and and just imagine that that this line and this line are at the same spot um, so we'll call this P2 and now I have a focal point and I have uh, P2 so I could go ahead and try to solve for Q2 so let's go ahead and do that I'm going to shrink this down a little bit so we can keep the image here and I'll say 1 over P2 plus 1 over Q2 is equal to 1 over F2. Now, F1 and F2, it said in the problem, are the same. It said that F, the focal point of both lenses, is 14.9. And so, we could just say F. I'll, I'll keep F2 to keep uh, the, the, all the, the naming, the nomenclature clear. Now the problem doesn't specifically tell us what P2 is. It, it just tells us um, enough information that we could find it. So if we look at this, we wanted to define P2 based on these other variables. We could do that because um, you, you can see that P2 has a side that interacts with D, and it has a side that interacts with Q1, and Q1 has a side that interacts with D. And so we could define P2 is equal to the distance minus Q1. So in other words, if I take this whole distance and then I come back the distance of Q1, I've got P. And so I could substitute this right into this variable right here. So I think we'll go ahead and do that. So 1, let me change to a pin, 1 over, instead of P2, I'm going to be distance minus Q1 plus 1 over Q2 equals 1 over F2. Now I need to solve for Q1 because Q1 is an unknown variable. Um, so in or I'm looking to solve Q2, but Q1 is still an unknown variable, so let's solve that with another equation. So we'll use the same equation, the thin lens equation, 1 over P1 this time, plus 1 over Q1 is equal to 1 over F1. Then you can solve for Q1 by, uh, by taking Q1 is equal to P1 times F1 over 
P1 minus F1. And now what I can do is I can substitute this term right into Q1 right here. And so let's go ahead and do that as well. And again, I want to keep everything as much as I can on the screen. So I'll say um, 1 over, instead of saying D minus Q1, I'll say D minus P1 F1 over P1 minus F1. This is all divided by 1 plus 1 over Q2 equals 1 over F2. And now I want to isolate my term with Q2 in it uh, because that's what I'm trying to solve for. I'm trying to solve for the object distance from the second lens. So 1 over Q2 is equal to 1 over F2 minus 1 over D minus P1 F1 over P1 minus F1. And I'll put that in parentheses so you can tell that that's, that's all under the 1. And then you could take the inverse of both sides, um, which would simply be putting all of this in parentheses and putting it to the negative 1. And that would solve for Q1. Uh, but what I prefer to do is if you can do this algebraically, you get that Q2 is equal to P1 times D minus F1 times D minus P1 F1 times F2 divided by P1 times D minus F1 times D minus 2 P1 F1 plus F1 F2. And now this can actually be simplified a little bit more because F1 and F2 are the same number, or the same, they're the same value. So you can actually make this like F squared, and you could distribute this in and have a couple of F squared. That's not necessary. This is, this is simplified enough for me because when I plug it in my calculator, I don't have a lot going on. But you should get, you should be able to plug in your values. So for me, values of F is 14.9 centimeters, the value of P is 30 centimeters, and the value of D is 39.4 centimeters. That's everything you just plug and chug, and you get your answer of Q is equal to negative 28.6088. What does that mean? Well, let's go back and look at this. That means that, that this, that that this interaction right here where the where the lines let me make it big again where the lines appear to cross is right about here which is going to be 28 centimeters before it actually gets to the object so almost right after um, the first lens is if you trace these lines backwards that's where they appear to cross that's where the image appears to be formed that doesn't, that, this is still, now keep in mind, this is still a converging lens because it, it, the, the line would have went out straight this way, but it converged it down a little bit, so it's going back this way. It just didn't make it converge enough to make the lines cross in front. Now it wants to know the magnification, so we'll just find a nice clear blank spot to do magnification. We just solve for Q, uh, Q2. So the magnification of the whole system would be M1 times M1. M2, which would be uh, which would be negative Q1 over P1 times negative Q2 over P2. Now keep in mind the only thing we solved so far we solved we know what Q2 is we know what P1 is and we have an equation that relates Q1 and P2, but we don't know what those values are. We didn't solve for them. So what we need to do is uh, we'll go ahead and solve for P2 using the, the thin lens equation. Uh, 1 over P2 plus 1 over Q2 equals 1 over F2. And we'll just isolate P because we've already solved for Q. We know what F. F is given to us in the problem. So 1 over P is equal to 1 over F2 minus 1 over Q2, and then we get uh, Q minus F over QF, 
and this is both twos, uh, is equal to 1 over p. And then you take the inverse of that, so the inverse is p is equal to, so p2 is equal to um, q2 f2 over q2 minus f2. And so then we have an expression that solves for p2. We can either just figure out what that is, or you can um, go ahead and plug this into, uh, where's our equation at? Oh, back here. So you plug that into right here. And actually, let me make this a little bit smaller uh, and finish solving for that. I will, I, at this point, I prefer to go ahead and solve for this. And the reason for that is because you also have to use this number not only to plug into your magnification equation, but also to solve for um, to solve for q1. And so p2 is equal to um, 9.797351 centimeters. And then I remember back whenever we looked at uh, I didn't mean to do that. That was odd. Um, way back here, and we said that uh, P, so if we wanted to find Q1, Q1, let's see if I can find where I wrote it out at, uh, it don't matter, Q1 is, or P2 is equal to D minus Q1, so if Q1, so if P2 is equal to D minus Q1, we can say that Q1 is equal to D minus P2. So same thing. And so we can define Q1 as D minus P2. So Q1 equals D minus P2, which is equal to 39.4 minus 9.797, which is equal to, it's equal to uh, 29.6. So this is Q1. 29.6. So we have everything now to solve for the total magnification. We have negative Q1 over P1. So P1, Q, negative Q1, negative 29.6. P1 is 30. So from that term, you get is equal to negative 0 0.98, uh, 0 0.98675 if you want to be exact. And then we have negative Q2 over P2 which uh, is equal to um, negative 28.6 divided by 9.79, and that equals uh, 2.9, 2.920053, 2 and then you just multiply these two numbers together. M1 times M2 gives you the total magnification of the whole system. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure you check out my blog. The link is down in the About section of this video. And on the blog, you'll find cool stuff like other videos for the same chapter. And you'll also find uh, little download links where you can download calculators to uh, basically just punch in your numbers and solve these exact problems. So you won't even have to watch the video if you don't want to. The last thing I want to say is if you leave comments on YouTube, of course I will get around to responding, but I'm much faster if you leave them at the bottom of my blog, right down there. Enjoy your day.